Okay, this is a video about forecasting. I was not going to make this video. I thought there are enough videos and discussions about this thing in Excel, this data tool, and this data tool called forecast. Okay, there are enough of those. And then I said, okay, well, you know, um, even there's something called real statistics. It's really pr pretty good. Not pretty good. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And then uh, Shakira, Shakira, like the singer in Malaysia, said, you know, if you do one of these forecasts and get one of these things like this, how do you come up with these intervals? And then I said, I don't know. And then I said, okay, well, how'd you come up with the forecast themselves? And I went to the internet and it stinks. It really stinks. Here's what the problem with the world is. Everybody wants to press a little stupid button here and nobody has any idea where the numbers come from. And I'm going to show you that Excel, I think, has some errors in. I'm convinced they do. I'm convinced they do. So we're going to do what my uncle says. My uncle, he studied under somebody named R.A. Fisher, most famous statistician. I'm a bunch of, I'm just a nothing. He's something, man. And he said, when I do any statistics, any analysis, I have to get in the sandbox. I have to know where the data comes from. I have to know everything about it. And he's right. He's old, like, he's older than me. Nowadays, everybody has to click a button. Now, we're going to start with some GDP per capita data, and I really want to show you something else. Oh, shoot. This is... I'll uh, get this one. And, uh, there is about a very big chance that Excel is going to blow up. Okay? And I'm going to be furious. I'm going to go nuts because it's been blowing up like crazy. Okay, now, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to save this file. I got a whole, to do this little analysis, I got a whole bunch of data from different countries. And uh, one of the good things, you can get raw data. And you can get all this raw data, and I haven't started doing this. And this is where it blows up. Oh, come on. Uh, it's It's got so many different sheets. It's got like a thousand different sheets, and you get all this GDP per capita data for everybody, CPI data. G, uh, let's get just the... I picked a bad one. Change in GDP. You can get population. How's the population? Let's get the population. And then you can... This list box, that's what's driving me crazy. I love this list box. And I think it, it's got a bug in Excel. Don't tell me that I'm doing something wrong with Excel. There's a bug. Okay, I'm going to save it, even though uh, uh, it's probably going to blow up Excel. So I wanted to show you this. And it's kind of cool. You can get all this data and really study it. And, and, and now, um, and here it goes. Okay, bye. Okay, it blew up Excel. I am so mad at Excel, I can hardly stand it. It's They try to get it better, and it's getting worse. I swear. I'm going to restart the computer, take all my list boxes out. I'm so mad, I can't, I can't stand it, wasting all this time. Enough. So we have all these different countries. And then, oh, look at this. See, it came from the... I'm so mad. <laughs> Sorry, you don't care. And then all you do, if you want to make a forecast... This is the problem with Excel. Fix the list boxes instead of giving me this stuff that's wrong anyway. Oh, my God. And I called the stupid people in Excel, and they didn't do anything. And then you can just create a little wonderful little page like this. And you say, oh, I made a forecast in two minutes. Where in the heck does it come from? There are like 18 zillion websites that tells you how you make this forecast. And they don't really say exactly how it's done. So that's what I'm going to tell you. Now, if we, I'm taking all these different GDP things. So all I did was put a little index function here with the same thing. All right. So right now I'm on the 
We're going to read the data. We're going to look at different forecasts. We're going to make a simple exponential smoothing. I'm going to co compute the mean squared error and the average deviation. They're so easy to do. I'm going to show you how to optimize it with a little data table. Then we're going to move to double uh, uh, smoothing, and I'm going to show you how to optimize that without a solver or anything. And then I'm going to show you where Excel seems to really have problems. Um, they have problems, I swear. And then I'm going to talk about prediction error in a separate video. So, I haven't sworn yet, I don't think. If you go here, you can just, this is kind of what's interesting. You can go through the different, oh, I didn't take away the grid lines, oh no. Um, the, the uh, uh, let's go back, I went to, I, I, there were some missing data in those. But we, you can see in all of the different data, now I want to show you something right now before we even start. You notice the difference in the deviation. Some of them, like this one, has a really wide deviation, and, and let's go back to Canada. And you notice that there's a lot less uh, uh, standard deviation in the whole thing. Canada had a 1.4% growth, Chad had a 3.6% growth, but that growth came here, and we, the, the variation seemed to cause a bigger deviation. Okay, and then you get all your different forecasts, and here, here's what it, how it works. There's something called forecast ETS, and it gives you something called alpha, something called a beta, something called the, the, the seasonality, which there's no seasonality, so this better be zero. I just couldn't press shift control one. Yes, I could. And then the mean squared error, I don't know what that is, and the mean average error, the root of the mean squared error, this is the standard deviation, really, um, and then how many how many days are in a step? So, and and I did some normal distributions, and I'm trying to figure out because Shakira asked, how do they come up with this different deviations for the different things? What a good question! And I went all over the internet, and they didn't answer it. So that's why I'm making this video. Now I did a manual example here. So this is China. And this is, this is going to show you the error, okay? And this is, demonstrates exactly how the Excel works and replicates the Excel statistics. And here is the biggest problem with it. The most important statistic of all is the, is the beta. And they don't, that beta, I better put a couple of extra decimals here, don't you think? Uh, this person in my class last week said, why do you not use a mouse for the decimals? Well, it takes so much longer. This beta for China was supposed to be 0.5. I computed as 0.08. When I replicated the forecast, oh my God, that has a, had a, let's go to Canada. Let's go to a boring country. No, it's not boring. I love it. It's talky and everything else. Uh, here. Uh, they had an alpha of 1.81 and a beta of, of 0.01. And then, to re and this replicates the forecast. I did a little goal seek to replicate the for forecast. I could have done a solver, actually. Just a minute. Okay. Uh, it didn't perfectly replicate it. Uh, I'm going to go on. That's what we're going to look at. That's what we're going to look at. Now, if I... Um, Let's talk, before we talk about it, they use something called double smoothing. Double X smoothing. And let's, before we do it, let's learn about simple, ex simple exponential smoothing. Now that, here, you've got an alpha statistic. Here's what you do. You start with the data. And you say, okay, I'm going to make the predicted data equal my actual. Then you get to the next period. And then you're going to say, this I'm going to take this observation times the alpha. And then I'm going to take the last prediction I made. That's why I put an error up there. And I'm going to put that as 1 minus the alpha. So there's a weighted average. We, a weighted average of the last prediction, weighting by the alpha and the 1 minus alpha. And then we get our new prediction. And I put that over here. And then we go to the next one, and we say, well, that's 0.9 times alpha, 
and then uh, uh, the last prediction times 1 minus alpha. So if I put an alpha here of 0.5, then it weights the, the, new, um, uh, uh, the new information half and the old forecast half. If I make the alpha of 1, it puts no weight on the old forecast. If I make the alpha a 0, it's got this weird thing where it, and maybe you have to start, maybe that's what Excel did, you have to start kind of using the first six averages, maybe. So, so instead of just using this, I could have taken the average six times. Maybe that's what they do. Okay, it's not documented. I can't find it. Maybe somebody will find it. I'll, I'll look a little more. And then we get the error in the prediction, and the error in the prediction is the last prediction compared to the this price. It's always the last prediction. And then we can take the absolute value of that error. Now I put an if a true here, so we can only take the errors kind of for the latter parts, because those first errors are kind of get getting everything just started, you know. So we can just take the average here. And when you take the average, that, if you take the square of the error, you call that the mean square error. And you just take the average of that. That's the average mean square error. You take the square root. That's the root of the mean square error. It sounds all fancy, but that's what it is. And this is just the MAD or MAE, which is the average. They don't call it MAD sometimes because it sounds bad, maybe. Okay, and that's the average. And then once you have all of that, then here's what I did. You can then figure out, well, let's figure out which gives you the lowest average. And instead of making a data table, which you could have made, and just make the alpha go from like 0 to, to 1, you can make a nice little, uh, uh, and I've done this so much that I'm not going to do it, a few lines. It almost is as fast as a data table, and then it's not going to slow down the Excel, and you can make graphs, and it's a lot better, actually. I really think it is. Okay, and then we, we uh, so when I did this error, you can graph different alphas. So all you're doing is changing this alpha way up here. That's like the column number in a data table, and you can see what gives you the lowest mean square error. And you can do that with the mean actual error or the mean mean square error or the mean absolute deviation. And the literature seems to not be sure which to take. Well, there's a vague discussion. And then, okay, here's what Excel does if you don't have quarterly data. It does the same sort of thing. How are we doing on time? Oh, okay, I'll, I'll just finish this one. It does the same sort of thing. Uh, you don't want to see that. But it, so we start with the regular thing. We have alpha, this times alpha, and then 1 minus alpha. And then, here's what you do. You take, and then you get the trend, kind of. This is almost like the, the thing without the first thing. And then they say, some guy named Holt says, no, 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 well, let's do it really cool. Because if you, here's the problem, I didn't finish this one. If you get to the very last one, you can go, here's the prediction, the very last prediction. So our prediction in the next period is this. And then if you take that prediction times alpha, and that times 1 minus alpha, you get the new thing, and it gives you the same prediction. There's no trend in the prediction. And all of these uh, economic data things that we looked at, uh, uh, with that wonderful download file that crashed, all of these ones, you know, had a growth rate. They clearly had a growth rate. We don't want a flat forecast. And this beta of 1 suggests there's a, a 0 0.01 suggests for Cameroon there's a flat forecast. And maybe it's just about flat, but it's not exactly flat. And Canada says it's 0 0.01, and there was a growth rate of 1.4%. And I know this isn't flat. I know it's not flat. So this beta is crap. So how in the, how when Shakira told me, oh, replicate the, figure out what's going on with the prediction, if they don't get the, the, the basic thing right in their statistics, how are you going to do that? And then we take the, the uh, uh, so, so then you do the, almost the same. You get a trend, which is the 
increase in the in the predicted value. So right now, let's put. I'm going to put our trend factor as zero, and that means that we just have exactly the same as our last example. Now I to. In this example, I took this real statistics thing, which was really good. I shouldn't criticize them at all. They, they made a little example, and you could figure it out from them. But I'm just adding a few things uh, uh, to what they did. And I couldn't see how they uh, computed the forecast error either. Okay, now if I put 0.5, that means we grow. We put a 0.5 weight, and we say, okay, well the trend factor is going to be this new f new one times the last trend factor that's what you do so it's kind of the same idea and then you, at the end you get this trend factor this is the forecast that just keeps growing and i hope i made this transparent now what i did then is i said okay well let's do the same thing you get the error that's the last value you get the absolute value of the error, the square of the error. You can do it all that. And then here, this time, you need a two-way data table because your forecast and your error depends on both of these things. So you can experiment with two different things, alpha and beta, and you can see how your forecast varies. And when you go to the variance of the forecast, here's a, I made a graph a little bit. But this one, this is a hyperlink. I made a really big data table and found the minimum thing in all of the alphas. You change both the alphas and the betas, and you get the minimum alpha and the minimum beta. You could do this with solver, too. It should give you exactly the same thing. If it doesn't, I don't know what. Why? You just go around and around for a whole bunch of different alphas and betas and get the same thing, okay? And... Uh, and that's how it works. Now, let me show you the problem. So here's our little example. Let's take, uh, uh, I'm not going to take Canada because I just said it. Let's take Chad. No, Chile. How's that? They had a growth rate in their series of 3.01. Now, if I press the solve button, I'm finding alpha and the beta Oh, finally. I did two goal seeks instead of using the solver. Sorry, I could have used the solver. And uh, here is, I get an alpha above one. To replicate exactly that forecast, I get an alpha of above one and a beta of, of uh, uh, because clearly there's a growth. There's a growth there. And they say the beta is 0 0.0001. And if I put... The Excel stuff in that here's so here's the here, I you compare the actual with the forecast since it's above one and they say never do it above one but that's how it works if I use the Excel statistics it just flattens out those Excel they're clearly not right now maybe my my uh, my implied method is not perfect because I matched exactly their, their, their forecast. Uh, just a minute. Yeah, this says how much did the forecast grow each, each year compared to the base. And I put my beta and alpha in, and I get the same thing. You can look through this. It's all going to be on the website in, the, uh, uh, in this uh, statistical analysis. Okay? So, <laughs> Excel got it wrong. Enough. And they can't fix the stupid thing that crashes. Ah, I'm so mad.